here from court uh, where two directors of Nakuru War Memorial Hospital were arrested on Friday uh, on the instigation of the county government in Nakuru and thereafter they have been since Friday they have been presented to court today where they have pleaded not guilty because as you all know it is a malicious prosecution and they are being pushed so that they can cede the land which belongs to the hospital and uh, different tactics are being used including now their incarceration and who are incarcerated uh, from Friday there have been various uh, attempts to force them to surrender the hospital land and uh, what is happening right now is extremely unfortunate because with, there is already a civil case which is going on there is in existence court orders barring county government of Nakuru from entering remaining or in any other way interfering with the management of Nakuru War Memorial Hospital but what you all know is that on, uh, on Friday the county government claimed that since the directors were incarcerated, they did not want there to be vacuum. And they invaded the hospital again, notwithstanding the existence of court order. The case is coming tomorrow for hearing the civil court. There are already orders which have barred them from entering, but they are bratantry disobeying court orders. And even this arrest and prosecution of these uh, directors was meant to give weight to the civil case because they know they have no case, they have no defense. They were sued, they have no defense. They are trying to look for evidence and defenses they can use in the civil case. It's unfortunate that in this era, we can have such persecution taking place. And we are surprised that the police are being used to intimidate and harass innocent Kenyans so that some few people can achieve very, very, very selfish uh, uh, objective. We know there are people who might be interested in grabbing Nakuru War Memorial Hospital land and that they must be the one who are instigating this malicious prosecution and harassment of the directors and the staff of Nakuru War Memorial Hospital. The hospital is learning, they are patients, but there is hidden, uh, there is some, the county has put some guards or askaris at the gate who are harassing patients who may want to go and get uh, treatment. In fact, they are chasing them away. It's extremely uncouth for uh, the government to do that, that they have placed uh, the council as carries at the gate 24-7 from Saturday, so that anybody going there must discuss what he is going to do. So if you say you are going to seek treatment, you are told they are not treating, so you are turned back. But there are already patients who are already admitted. There are quite a number of admitted patients who are going on with the treatment. The doctors are getting assessed, but the members of the public cannot assess the hospital. What, uh, what is your next move? Based on the contempt by the county Tomorrow we will cite the county secretary for contempt. We will do that. We have already filed an application for contempt, and tomorrow we will definitely raise it before the court. Yeah. Aside from the guards, has the county government taken over anything else aside from the guards? Uh, save for that, you know they have they are, they have they have stopped. They, they, are, they are barring entry to the hospital, but the hospital is being learned. The people learning are the, do the doctors who visit the hospital, the staff whom you are seeing here, but not the staff of the county. But at the gate, you cannot get into the hospital if you are a patient. And even as a visitor, they are, they are, even they are denying relatives of the admitted patient access to the hospital. Is posting that there a violation of the court order? Definitely. That is, definitely, that is a court order because the court order has to, that is interfering. The injunction stopped them from entering, remaining, or in any manner whatsoever interfering with the running of the hospital. Therefore, placing the guards there is utter contempt. That is interfering with the hospital. Maybe I don't do that. And maybe the chairman of Rift Valley Law Society, since he is here, he may comment about the disobedience of the court orders. Um, okay, thank you. Um, I'm here on behalf of the Law Society of Kenya. My name is Aston Muchella the chair of uh, Law Society of Kenya Rift Valley branch. And uh, as a society, we are uh, expressing our total dismay with what is happening uh, because I have personally been to that hospital today. I have seen patients being turned away. And um, this is in total violation of the provisions of our constitution because Article 43A of our constitution allows every Kenyan to enjoy uh, health care to the highest level. 
So it matters not the kind of disputes that are in court. It matters not the wrangles of ownership that could be there. But a Kenyan should not be denied access to any health facility because parties are wrangling in, uh, in hospital. And we, we want to, to send a warning to the parties that are involved. And especially to the hospital and the county, not the hospital, the county, because I've seen county enforcement officers turning away uh, patients who are in need of critical care. I've seen um, a patient who was uh, due for dialysis. They called me in distress and said they are, the patient needs to go for dialysis, but she has been turned away. And I was imagining if something happens to this patient while they are still looking for an alternative place for dialysis, who should be held accountable? The county should get to know that Article 43 of the Constitution overrides the kind of interest they have with regards to that, uh, to that uh, hospital. They should allow patients to be treated even as the court is seized on the issue of, uh, of ownership. Then the citizens of Nakuru do not care who is the owner of War Memorial. They want services because the Constitution allows them those services. So as the law society, we are mandated to protect the citizens when it comes to matters of law and when it comes to matters of their rights. So we shall stand and ensure that the citizens of Nakuru do get the health care that they deserve because that has been enshrined and has been given to them by the Constitution. Thank you. I, uh, there has been a lot of propaganda and uh, misinformation. This hospital is a private company which was incorporated in 1924. And it has been learning through directors and shareholders. It is a company limited by guarantee. And therefore, the ownership has always been the name of the company. The first title was issued in 1927 and it was in the name of Nakuru War Hospital. The company was incorporated in 1924, and it has always been like that. Uh, along the way, at one point or another, the, 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 the directors and shareholders of the, uh, of the hospital had invited uh, government officers to be part of the directorship. That was an invitation by the hospital. It was the hospital to decide who are the directors. The fact that you are director does not make you an owner. At one point, the provincial medical officer used to sit. Of course, after devolution, that, that seat was no longer there. And the hospital decided that the directors will be as, uh, as per the decision of the, of, of the hospital. Which the, and those decisions are usually made every year during the AGM of the hospital. When the hospital does its age annual general meeting, it either appoints new directors or reappoint the old directors. And that is exactly what is happening. So all these are the rumors that at one time it was owned by the, the government. It was, it has never, in fact, we are in court and we have told them to bring the slightest evidence of ownership by the government. They have none. So what happened is that when the lease expired, it was renewed. So they are saying that the lease was improperly renewed, but they are not saying it was not renewed. It was improperly renewed. But everyone knows that upon expiry of the lease, what happens? The first priority is on the registered owner. And unless the registered owner write formally to the ministry and say, I don't want that land, he is entitled to that land. Nakuru War Memorial applied for the renewal of the lease and the lease was renewed. It's as simple as that. So anybody coming, and that lease title has been there since 1927. So I don't know what has happened in 2023, 2024. There has been a lot of now interest in that land. Well, last, for, the last, for, the, for the last almost 100 years, that title has been in existence in the name of Nakuru War Memorial Hospital. And Nakuru War Memorial Hospital is a company limited by guarantee. These are the stories you hear that it is a trust. I, we have been asking them, those proponents, to bring a trust deed or any document showing that Nakuru War Memorial is a trust. They have nothing. Nizira tunasema stories are jamba. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that's what's happening. How big is the Sorry? The land, it's 24 acres. Yeah, 25 acres. Mm, I may not be very, very, very certain, but you know, part, even where uh, Annex is, is part of the War Memorial land. Where Annex is, is that is part of uh, War Memorial. And nobody has ever kicked annex. Nobody has ever, they are still there even today. The county government doctors and uh, nurses and staff, they are still running their annex. So I don't know why they are interested in the uh, war memorial. Okay, maybe, maybe you can explain. In terms of uh, management, we have other war memorial hospitals across the country. What yeah. is peculiar to this hospital compared to the other? Yeah, I don't know those ones. I only know Nakuru War Memorial. <laughs> I don't know those ones. I know this one. Those ones you are talking about are Forces Memorial, which are owned by KDF. Okay. And you have the ones in Lanet.
Yeah, this is a Nakuru Wome Moritz, purely a private hospital. 